What's going on guys? Sam Adams here and welcome to another episode of Cabinet Today for November the 15th of 2018. My name is Samuel Adams and welcome to today's show. I hope that this one does find you well and for those that may be brand new to the program, this is a daily gaming news podcast where I bring you the hottest gaming news from around the industry and let you guys know what is going on if you did want to keep up with it. And man, has it been a crazy couple of hours because we just got word that PlayStation is not going to be attending E3 2019, and I have some thoughts on that. Now, tomorrow's video that goes up on the main channel, youtube.com slash Samuel Adams Media, is going to cover that immensely because I have a lot of thoughts on that, more than I can fit into this episode of Caffeinate, but I will try and do my best to let you guys know what my thoughts are tonight. But again, big piece of news because it's the first time in the history of E3 that they are not going to be attending uh, in any large capacity, essentially, and that's a big, big deal for a lot of people. Now, moving on, we have a follow-up for the Telltale information that, of course, has been evolving over the past couple of months. Sony has a big anniversary event going on, on top of Xbox and Halo, which we will talk about entirely, because there's a lot of good stuff that happened on November the 15th throughout the years. On top of that, Square Enix has a secret project for the PlayStation 5. Sonic Fox, the victor in a big championship, has donated $10,000, and I'll tell you what, too, because it is very respectable, if I do say so myself. On top of that, Stardew Valley is making big bucks on the mobile platform. Desert Bus has made a lot of cash in charity over the years, and that pretty much will wrap up today's show. The big news is, of course, Sony and PlayStation not going to be attending E3 of 2019. And again, for those that are brand new to the show, welcome on in. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into it, shall we? First off, Sony Interactive Entertainment is not attending E3 of 2019. The history of the Electronic Entertainment Expo is as long as it is circuitous. The annual event has traditionally brought the entire gaming industry together as developers and publishers fight for attention both on and off the show floor through announcements, trailers, and pomp and circumstance. The displays of grandeur have embedded and flowed, excuse me, ebbed and flowed over the course of E3's soon to be 25 year history, with different companies occasionally reconsidering the extent of their involvement in the show. Now, one of its biggest players, Sony, has decided that PlayStation will not be attending E3 of 2019. Quote, as the industry evolves, Sony Interactive Entertainment continues to look for inventive opportunities to engage the community, the company told Game Informer via a statement. PlayStation fans mean the world to us, and we always want to innovate, think differently, and experiment with new ways to delight gamers. As a result, we have decided not to participate in E3 in 2019. We are exploring new and familiar ways to engage our community in 2019 and can't wait to share our plans with you. When asked if Sony would push its event offsite, similar to how Electronic Arts provides a show adjacent to E3, PlayStation Senior Vice President of Communications Jennifer Clark elaborated further, saying, quote, we will not activate or hold a press conference around E3. Sony's withdrawal from E3 likely comes as a disappointment to fans that look forward to the company's stage show as a centerpiece for the expo as a whole. From huge announcements like Spider-Man and Horizon Zero Dawn to tense onstage demos like The Last of Us, Sony has always brought a certain flair to the show. The press conference battle between Microsoft and Sony, especially once Nintendo changed to a video format, is often the talk of E3. The announcement comes after Sony declined to hold their annual fan event called PlayStation Experience or PSX this year, which usually takes place in the first two weeks of December. Sony Interactive Entertainment chairman Sean Layden said at the time that there was simply not enough to show this year, a problem that fans also pointed out during the previous year's more low-key event. The official statement suggests that Sony has plans to engage the community in other events. Does this mean Sony will be reviving the currently shuttered PlayStation experience? Quote, we are looking at events as a whole and how we can speak more to our fans and continue to wow them. The timing of PSX and E3 didn't allow for that, Clark replied, but lots of exciting things to come and we hope to share shortly. Some of our biggest games will have key milestones next year, so we will work hard to blow those up. The Entertainment Software Association, or ESA, has hosted E3 since its inception in 1995. The trade association is made up of the video game industry's largest and most notable publishers, including Sony Interactive Entertainment, and has recently made moves to transition E3 from less of an industry event to a fan-inclusive one. We reached out to ESA about Sony's announcement, they say a game informer, and were informed they plan to release a statement later on today, which has not been released at the time of this stream, I will say. So what do you think about Sony pulling away from E3 in 2019? Does it change your view of the show? And you can let them know in the comments down below over there on Game Informer, or you can let me know in the comments section down below if you happen to be watching on YouTube or hanging out in the chat. 
Now, I will say, this is a very sticky situation because E3 has been evolving very quickly over the course of the past decade or so. And I go into more detail in a video that is going to be going up tomorrow, like I said. Uh, but essentially, there is no reason for this show to really exist anymore because a lot of the hype that is drummed up is being drummed up via social media and the internet as a whole. It's just quite not as necessary because back in the late 90s and early 2000s, uh, you really did have to have this kind of show to let people know know what was going on. You had to let people know what new games were coming out, what new technology was coming out, uh, show off the new consoles, and of course E3 was and still is the one time of the year whenever everybody's eyes are on the video game industry, whether they're into it traditionally or not. There are major, major news outlets that cover what is coming out of E3, and so to forego that means that Sony is either very confident in what they have for the future, or perhaps they have nothing to show for next year, which is exactly what happened with PSX, as this article does say. They simply didn't have enough to show, and so with a lot of big games coming out in the first chunk of 2019, did they really need a press conference for E3 of 2019? Uh, now, as somebody who was planning to go to E3 and is somewhat on the fence about going to E3, I don't know that I want to go anymore because quite frankly, going to the PlayStation press conference is one of the biggest deals for me. That was something that I truly did want. That was something that I really was interested in attending. And so whenever you have that being taken out entirely, I'm just not entirely sure if this is the same event, if this is the same kind of conference that I grew up wanting to attend. As this article does say, uh, it's gone from somewhat of a trade show to more of a fan investment kind of show where you begin to really work with and talk with those people that buy the games that you make and that really do play the games that you play. And so to see them pulling out of E3 2019 is not something that is necessarily shocking to me, but it is something that marks the beginning of a transition into a complete uh, refinagling of E3 in a way where you do have a completely different experience that has gotten uh, as compared to the years past. And is it sad? Is it happy? Whatever you want to call it. I'm not really sure what it is at this point. It is definitely different than what we had before. Uh, so again, more thoughts are going to be coming out in a video that is going live tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern time, excuse me, over there on youtube.com slash Samuel Adams Media uploaded and ready to go for you whenever I'm at work and therefore I don't have to upload it directly. But to Nitty in the chat, welcome on in. Glad to see you and welcome to the show. But moving on to Telltale Games news, their titles have been delisted from Steam and the studio liquidation is now underway. A sad little shell of what the news has been telling over the course of the past few months. A handful of Telltale Games titles, including episodic series based on Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, and the Monkey Island series are no longer available for sale on Steam. Those titles have been delisted from Valve's digital storefront, though some of those products are still for sale on other platforms like the PlayStation Store and the Xbox Game Store. The developer's most popular product, Telltale's The Walking Dead series, has also been removed from sale on Steam. It is possible that the studio's entire catalog is going to be removed at some point in the series, but other sellers like Humble Bundle are still selling seasons of The Walking Dead, which could mean that it is just one of these circumstantial kind of situations, and it could just be this specific platform, which is, of course, Steam. Telltale Games is currently liquidating its remaining assets, according to a report from Game Daily. The developer laid off the vast majority of its employees in September and announced it planned to shut down. That closure happened in the midst of The Walking Dead's final season, and the devs said it hoped to finish the series even as the studio shuttered. Telltale eventually struck a deal with The Walking Dead comic creator Robert Kirkman, Skybound Entertainment, to bring closure to the multi-season episodic game. Former Telltale employees are suing the company in a class action lawsuit, alleging that it violated labor laws when it laid off hundreds of employees. Employees. And so the saga continues. We have more news coming out about Telltale Games. And again, something that is going to be going on for a very long time. I would say you're going to be seeing this for at least the next year or so because a lot goes in to shutting a company down. You have to deal with the employees, you have to deal with the assets behind the scenes. And so to see this stuff beginning to happen is just them sorting out all this stuff. But I did want to let you guys know that Telltale Games games are now not on Steam. At least many of them are being pulled down. So will they pull down all of them eventually? We'll see what happens. I hope not. But as Nenny says in the chat, what happened with Telltale Games is crap. Because when it comes to storytelling, they were the ones that you looked to. They were the ones that did it well. And so whenever you're thinking about the future of the gaming industry, when it comes to narrative-based games, uh, you can't really think about the future without thinking about what 
Telltale put in to create the experiences that we have today. The foundational part of the narrative-based gameplay in modern gaming wouldn't be the same without Telltale Games, and so they deserve to be applauded for that. But the way the company ended their run is something that is a little bit shameful because they really did the employees dirty. And uh, again, as Nenny says, they weren't able to manage their employees correctly, and so therefore you have what you're getting today. Also, sip a coffee out of my kind of funny mug that I've been drinking out of since freshman year of college beyond but if you did want to learn more about telltale games i have many past episodes of caffeinate if you did want to check out all of the previous news you can probably just search caffeinate and then telltale something along those lines and they will pop up but on top of that many other outlets do have a lot of news coming out about telltale games but it is very sad when it comes down to it because they were doing well there and of course the walking dead's final season was something that uh, many many people were looking forward to and i'm sure it will still be fine whenever the uh, other company does release it but still just a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths and a lot of issues going on behind the scenes there but moving on to happier news we have an anniversary sony celebrates the sale of 86 million ps4 units as the system turns five years old Thursday marks the fifth anniversary of the PlayStation 4, which sold 86 million units since the release, as revealed via the PlayStation blog. Sony is marking the occasion with a new console bundle and some newly revealed statistics around its current gen home console, such as the impressive note that software sales surpassed 777 million units for the PlayStation 4 as of July 2018. Among software sales, the most downloaded PlayStation Plus games and most popular system titles list include Destiny 2, Fortnite, and Just Cause 3. The top five best-selling titles overall for the PlayStation 4 are Grand Theft Auto 5, FIFA 17, FIFA 18, Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and Call of Duty World War 2. Those mainline staples of the gaming industry still holding strong even in 2018. Sony also revealed that there's a new Black Ops 4 PlayStation 4 bundle available on November the 27th. The bundle includes a Jet Black 1TB PS4 console with one controller and a copy of the game and is going to retail for $299. The bundle appears to be a result of various Call of Duty installments appearing in the PlayStation 4's list of most downloaded, best-selling, and most popular titles, although it's only been a month since the release of Black Ops 4, so the bundle still feels timely, and of course it is going to be a big seller for the holiday season without a doubt. What is slightly disappointing is that Sony chose not to offer a unique console for this bundle. The rarest PlayStation 4 model, the translucent blue 500 million limited edition, was very much a coveted console upon its release, as only 50,000 were made. It seems like the five-year anniversary of the console would have been a perfect occasion to offer up another special edition console. And of course, there is a lot more here with this story because they released an entire infographic that shows a breakdown of a lot of fun facts. Now, there have been 11 major updates. Now, you have 1.01, which was released on launch, and then 6.0, which is the most recent. On top of that, sell-in numbers for PS4 units are over 86 million. Software sell-in numbers are, as we said, 777.9 plus million units. The most popular <laughs> DualShock 4 colors uh, appear to be, I believe that's steel. Uh, it's like a, one of those metallic gray-looking controllers. Blue, red, white, and camo. I'm sure there are more official names for those, but that's what you've got right there. And then, of course, you have the rarest PS4 model being the PlayStation 4 Pro 500 million limited edition, which is oh so crisp and oh so clean. Looks very good right there. And, of course, the most popular titles are, as we said, Call of Duty FIFA uh, twice, back-to-back -back 17 and 18, Fortnite, and Grand Theft Auto 5. Uh, but congratulations to the PlayStation 4. Again, good run so far. My favorite console of all time, I would say, uh, aside from perhaps the PlayStation 2. Very, very good console with that one. But regardless, it has seen a lot of success has brought me and many others a lot of joy and so to uh to go ahead and commemorate i will say that five years ago today in the morning at around six o'clock in the morning i was outside of a target waiting to pick up a playstation 4 because i was too broke to pre-order one and i had been working at mcdonald's for about five months at that point maybe a little bit more maybe a little bit less and i had saved up a good bit of money on top of saving up for a car and i was able to drain my bank account and get uh, PlayStation 4 and I think three games um trying to think I think it was uh Killzone Shadowfall and then it was also FIFA I know I got FIFA that year and then I believe I got Battlefield 4 which did run into a couple of issues but those are the ones that I got and uh and there you go that was a good time of my life really was digging that one 
But more good news, Square Enix begins work on a AAA title for the PlayStation 5, looking forward to the future. Square Enix's Luminous Productions is apparently working on an unannounced new AAA title for the PlayStation 5. As spotted by Reset Air user no Life BR, good name, a since-removed LinkedIn profile for a 3D character model lead artist Tomohiro Takoro, Nailed it, included the next generation game as part of his work at the studio alongside a new mobile title for China and now canceled DLC for Final Fantasy XV. Luminous is a new studio at Square Enix, originally set up by Final Fantasy XV director Hajime Tabata specifically to develop AAA games. Last week, Tabata quit Luminous and Square Enix as a whole, leading to the cancellation of three in-development DLC packs. Square subsequently altered its strategy for Luminous, which incurred a three, uh, $33 million debt. I, I apologize, I almost said $33, and I was like, that's not that big of a deal. Extraordinary loss in its recent financial reports. Sony recently confirmed that it was working on next-generation hardware, and rumors point to Microsoft working on two variants of the next Xbox. Square Enix isn't the first publisher to mention working on next-gen games, accidentally or otherwise, but there are many references to new hardware that are beginning, or beginning uh, to go ahead and gun their way out there. There we go, tying it together, nailed it, as Blowpro says in the chat. Welcome, my friend, to the show. Uh, but, right now, Square Enix is working on the next generation, and I think they are not alone in this. Of course, that would be, you know, a very gullible assumption to assume that nobody else had begun working on the next generation of software yet, because that's what you have to do. If you want games to come out as soon as a console launches, you really have to get in there early with those dev kits. You've got to get your hands dirty and figure out what these new consoles are capable of so that you can have something that comes out on day one within just a couple of days after the console does launch, or even months at that. Uh, and many many developers are going to be working on this kind of thing and so it's good to see uh, that Square Enix is among those because they can really nail a good game and I cannot wait to see what they do have in store but again nothing confirmed as of yet not necessarily a Final Fantasy game could be a totally new AAA game uh, as it does say a new AAA game could be completely original but it is coming out on the PlayStation 5. Interesting that they call it the PlayStation 5. I would assume that's what it's going to be called, but you never can tell in the world of Nintendo Switches and Xbox Ones coming out of the woodwork, just blowing my mind over here, like Xbox One X. What even is that? But we'll see what happens with the next generation, and we should hear something around E3, I would assume, but with the cancellation of the PlayStation press conference, you never know when this kind of news is going to be coming out. Now moving on to a good, feel-good story, Sonic Fox is donating $10,000 of his Injustice 2 Pro Series grand prize to opponent's family. Dominique Sonic Fox McLean was crown champion in the Injustice 2 Pro Series this week, and he's donating a large portion of his winnings to fellow esports professional Curtis Rewind McCall. Sonic Fox walked away the winner of the Injustice 2 Pro Series Grand Finals in Chicago, Illinois this week, along with the $40,000 grand prize. So, what does he plan to do with such a large paycheck? Donate $10,000 of it to the family of Rewind, who finished in second place. Quote, I don't do this for the money, Sonic Fox said in a post-win interview via Kotaku. Rewind is one of my good friends, one of my training partners, and I'm so very happy to have shared the stage with him. Rewind's father has stage 3 cancer, and he went into surgery a day before the Injustice 2 EVO 2018 champ left for the Injustice 2 Pro Series. It's a wonderful thing that Sonic Fox is doing, and we wish Rewind's father a speedy recovery, and that goes for me as well. Uh, this is a story that I included, not to necessarily raise up Sonic Fox, which of course he should be praised for this choice, but just to show how to do something well, how to be a good person, because so many of these events uh, don't necessarily highlight the good in the world, and to see this being done, to see the number one player give back to somebody that did lose to him technically, is something that people need to see, and it's putting good back into the world, and that's something I felt was important to include in today's episode of Caffeinated because this is amazing, you know. Sonic Fox gets a lot of stuff uh, coming back at him that is negative because he is a strange individual by the definition of many people, but he is a good guy. You know, whenever you talk about his stage presence, his personality, his entire psyche surrounding the fact that he is essentially an esports phenomenon, uh, it's awesome to see that he is giving back in such a good way and that he has not let it go to his head. Uh, so again, more info on this over there on VG247, but congratulations to Sonic Fox, first off, for winning the Injustice 2 Pro Series, but on top of that, for being a quality individual on top of that as well. But Stardew Valley, moving on to more gaming news, has made $1 million in three weeks on mobile. 
Critically acclaimed indie farming simulator slash role-playing game Stardew Valley is having a great first month on mobile. It's grossed $1 million after only three weeks on iOS, according to market intelligence company Sensor Tower. The U.S. makes up the majority of players on mobile so far, Sensor Tower said. About 41% of copies sold come from there. Japan makes up about 12% of spending to date. Nearly 25% of mobile purchases have been made on iPads. How about that? Stardew Valley first released on PC in 2016 and has reportedly sold over 3.5 million copies across all platforms since. The iOS port developed by mobile game studio The Secret Police launched on October the 24th. It's the full version of the game and plays almost identically to its PC and console counterparts, creator Eric Barone assured fans in an announcement last month. The biggest difference is the addition of touchscreen controls along with a tweaked UI and menu system. Stardew Valley on iOS also includes all the original single player content released in the recent 1.3 update, including the night market and new character events. Stardew Valley publisher Chucklefish Games is now working with developer Pixpill on an adventure RPG called Eastward inspired by its 90s Japanese animation and video game classics like Mother and The Legend of Zelda. The publisher is also creating a new sim called Spellbound, which CEO Finn Bryce once described as Stardew Valley meets Harry Potter, and neither game has a release date yet. And as a side note, Ninny in the chat is very excited about Spellbound. I, for one, have not even heard any news about it, so I cannot wait to give that one to Google here after the show does conclude. But meanwhile, Barone is working on a new secret project, and he teased it on Twitter back in February. Now, this is a very exciting time for fans of Stardew Valley because, of course, the game is a worldwide sensation. Uh, the PC version of the game is one of the... It's cute. It's adorable. I love this game. Uh, now, when it comes to playing it, not really my kind of thing. Not really into that kind of uh, kind of experience for me. But it's such a chill, laid-back game that it's great for those that might just have a couple of extra minutes to kill. And that's why it works so well on mobile. It's not high-octane. It's not something that is going to be stressing you out or anything along those lines. Uh, it is just, quite frankly, a very chill chill, awesome game just to veg out and enjoy, and so it fits well on mobile, PC, whatever you might be playing on, it's just a good game overall, and so I'm excited to see where it does go over the course of the next few years. Very well could be that same kind of Minecraft vibe, I would say not as big as Minecraft, but it very well could be something that comes pre-installed on a lot of the devices that you do buy over the course of the next 5-10 to 10 years if it continues growing at this specific rate. And so again, as you have Starbound coming out, as you have a lot of stuff coming out, uh, a lot of good pieces of gaming history being made before our eyes right here. And so it's very, very cool to see. I need to dive back into that game. I have it. I just haven't played that much of it. I kind of lost interest. But returning back to some charity stuff, Desert Bus for Hope motors past $5 million raised all time. And it is a very big achievement right here, if I do say so myself. Desert Bus for Hope, the absurdest gaming marathon for a good cause, now in its 12th year, eclipsed $5 million in money raised lifetime yesterday evening. Organizers Loading Ready Run also reported the largest single auction bid in the drive's history, $12,000. So far, this year's marathon has raised more than $590,000 and has driven Desert Bus, an excruciatingly boring unreleased minigame for Sega CD, for more than six days nonstop. The proceeds go to Child's Play, the penny arcade philanthropy that gives video games and toys to children in hospitals nationwide. In Desert Bus for Hope, marathoners commit to driving the virtual bus for an hour, whose price is 7% higher than the preceding hours. The first hour starts at a dollar, then compounds. This morning, Desert Bus for Hope projected they still had another 50 15 hours to drive. The most Desert Bus for Hope has raised in a single marathon was $695,242.57 in 2016, and the series, one of the first high visibility gaming marathons for charity, reached $1 million in donations in 2012, two in 2014, three in 2016, and four million last year. And so, you have Desert Bus doing very well. Uh, now, I do want to say that if you have not checked out Desert Bus for Hope, it is a very impressive fundraiser. And, of course, Desert Bus itself is excruciatingly boring, as the article does say. Uh, but, again, for a good cause. It's actually people that are suffering for a good cause. It is very dull, as you can see by this man with a wig and a hat on that is just chilling out here, waiting for the bus to continue rolling. Uh, but if you did want to check it out or do any kind of donations, I'm sure that you can give that a quick Google. And I will also link it down below in the YouTube subscription or description uh, if you did want to check that out uh, but good to see that five million dollars has been raised and man as Nenny says in the chat there are many 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 ads for fallout 76 i promise this is not a sponsored episode of cabinet i swear 
But we can't close out the show without celebrating the fact that today is the anniversary of the original Xbox turning 17 years old. Happy anniversary to everybody who's been along for the ride since the very beginning. And again, this is one of the consoles that changed it all. I can't remember what industry professional I saw tweeting about this, but he was very skeptical about the fact that Microsoft was making a console. And so at some kind of event, I remember he said that he went in to play Halo on the original Xbox and and he left by buying an Xbox. That is exactly what happened. He was so blown away by the fact that the Xbox was just this good that he went ahead and bought one himself. And of course, you do have the giant Duke controller, the legendary legend that is just there beside the Xbox. Very good stuff here. And, um, wouldn't be the same, man. The entire industry is completely changed because of this specific console. Now, the fact that it's the launch day of the Xbox you know, one, not the, not the Xbox One, but the first Xbox, you also had the launch of Halo. This is the 17th anniversary of Halo. 17 years ago, the UNSC Pillar of Autumn arrived at a mysterious ring world and set in motion an adventure that we will never forget. Happy birthday, Halo Combat Evolved, which was the launch game that came out on the Xbox that changed the entire course of FPSs from there on out. Without Halo, you wouldn't have the gaming industry as you have it today. There are so many games that are built on the back of that game. It's amazing to think about. So 17 years, that's that's really old. You're almost legal. Congratulations. Uh, so it is such a good game. And if you've never played Halo, as Nenny says he has in the chat, you need to get on that. It's a really good game. It's worth buying at least three Xboxes for. That's an inside joke. Just buy one. I promise you just... Just by one. But again, happy birthday to Halo. Happy birthday to Xbox. It's a fantastic time to be a gamer. Now, before we close out the show, I did want to return. Starbound coming out. I misspoke. It has already been out. Again, not really a game that I keep up with. But hey, keeping you guys informed along the way. However, that wraps it up for today's episode of Caffeinate. If you did enjoy today's show, be sure to drop me a like down below if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening via podcast service later on, I appreciate you very much. And I appreciate you listening. And I hope you click that subscribe slash follow slash RSS feed edition button. Whatever you have to click, make sure you get it delivered to your inbox every single weekday around 7 p.m. Eastern time if you did want to catch up with the hottest gaming news of the day. But I hope you guys have a fantastic one, and I will be back tomorrow for Friday's episode of Cabinet. And at this rate, if PlayStation just cancels their E3 press conference, who knows what tomorrow will bring. It could be a crazy day. Very exciting stuff, but I will talk to you soon, and peace.